and IEC. We welcome our principal for today's webinar and the topic is migrating from papers to patents, uh, so which is required in the present scenario also. And um, this is the event which we are organizing for quarter three under SSNIAC. Now I request a principal to start the session. Over to you, sir. Okay, thank you. Morning to all. Uh, again, I'm not talking to you as a principal. <laughs> I want to talk to you as a researcher who has done something on patents. The background is um, when I did my PhD in IIT long back, 89 to 92, I had about 25 publications out of my PhD thesis. I was at a very high peak of publishing norms. With that speed, I went into Carborundum Universal. When I wrote my first paper there, my boss laughed at me. He said, very simply, he said, you are in industry. Anything useful, please patent. Anything useless, you publish. That's what he said. And I was really shocked. <clears throat> so from a period where we are publishing a lot, to moving into a place where they say publishing is useless. If you make money out of it, you have to patent it and you should not go for publish. There is a complete stoppage of publication. That's what you can see now. Your journals, whatever you track, nobody from industry publishes. Very few people from research. <laughs> but people from industry do not publish. So please understand that is not the game. If you want to play football, you have to enter a place where they are playing with you, right? Now they are all into something else. They are not into publication at all. So that was the first shock. From publishing, I had to go into patenting. So out of need, out of force, I learned something. And that is what I'm trying to share with you now, okay? So from then on, I tried to learn what is patent, how to go about patenting. And then at the end of the day, I was successful. I wrote about 12 patents, out of which eight have been granted and the remaining are still in different stages of processing. So I experienced something. I'm going to share only the experience. I'm not an expert in it, okay? So let's start. Uh, okay, the outcome will be like this. If you go through this presentation along with me, you can understand what is the nuances of why people choose papers because it's a shortcut. And patent is a quite a difficult and long process. And then how to do a patent search whether your work in hand, is it patentable or not patentable? We can evaluate that. We'll give you some methods. And then knowing all this, I got now 30 papers, 40 papers. I don't have a patent. How do I plan a patent? So those things can be discussed. That's the idea I'm having. <clears throat> Roughly anytime you start now, you want like to know when this will end. So it's 52 slides. And approximately, it'll take about 45 minutes. So this is how I'm going to go. First, we'll talk about what all we know, then we'll move to what we don't know. So that's the order we'll go. First, this is the uh, paper production basics, which all of you know, but let's understand this reference once again. Uh, if you, what do we do for publishing? We always want to know what is the gap. Without knowing the gap, we don't want to do a publication. So we naturally take a literature survey, understand the gap, we develop a hypothesis and then do the experiments. We prepare the experimental design. We see what are the results. We observe, analyze. We are all uh, well, uh, uh, well versed in this, and all of us have got a lot of good approach. That's why our publications are good here. Then, while reporting the results, what we do? There are many options. You can go to a ordinary journal. You can do a conference. You can go to a Scopus, a Thomson Reuters. So many opportunities are available. It is your choice. You have plenty of choice. You can go to a conference, international, national, etc. And how is your paper assessed? It's done by peer reviews. You do not know the fellow sitting next to you would have been a reviewer to your paper, and he doesn't know it is your paper. It gets reviewed. That's how the blind peer review goes. It is not really seen by experts, but it goes by, by practice. It goes to peer reviews. And a lot of guys who don't even publish sit to review our papers. That also happens in nowadays in uh, some of the ordinary journals. And what happens in your denial? Suppose a paper is rejected. Nothing to worry. I change the format. I change the first page or something. I change the format. And I send it back to some other journal. So there is no delay in it. If somebody doesn't accept, somebody else will accept. And after that, what happens? You keep on looking for citations. You look for your H-index. 
you uh, publicize it in social media, you put it in LinkedIn, you put it in ResearchGate. You're looking for people to follow your paper. That is important here. And actually within six months to one year, you can get a result, whether a paper is accepted or not accepted. Similarly, if you look at clarification sort, it is only during um, your review process. So that is you submitted today within two, three months or maximum six months, they'll ask you clarifications about your work and you will be able to answer it. And what is the validity of your paper? It's eternal. Anytime you publish, it's going to be there for years to come, even for hundred years, if your paper is good, people can cite. So there is no age limit for the published paper. And if you look at the type of work, whether it is positive or negative, both can be reported. This is the advantage. I can do some research and say, this thing will not work. The effect of this on this, then we'll say, by using this method, it will be a failure. Even that can be published. So that is the advantage of publications. All of us know this. Now, contrastingly, look at patent. So what happens if you go for a patent? I'm not able to move. Yeah. So if you look at it, uh, first we have to do a patent mapping. Just like a literature survey among journals, you have to do a literature survey among patents. Then identify what is weak. Then only you have to design a product. Unfortunately, we don't do this. We don't do the part one at all. And then doing the work again, it has to end up in a product. You cannot have a method or a system. Something will not help. You have to have something concrete, which is fabricated experiment or a product, generally a product. And then how do you report the results? You don't have a choice at all. You have to give only to that particular patent agent assigned to your region. I have to go to Chennai Patent Office only. I have no choice of giving it to anybody else. Again, you're not supposed to publish it before you give it to the patent office. We'll talk about those things later. Uh, there are some uh, possible deviations, but let's not look at it now. As of now, take it as you should not publish before it is given to the patent office. And there are no varieties of journal. There's only one patent office and you have to go only to him. And the assessment will be done by qualified patent examiners who know very much about your area. You'll be an expert in your area, not like a peer review by somebody else. And on denial, suppose the patent uh, examiner says it's not okay, you have no option. You have to modify. You cannot go to another patent office, just like a journal. So these things make patent very, very difficult. And after the grant also, in paper, you want everybody to copy your paper. Whereas in patent, you don't want anyone to even come closer to you. So you have to keep protecting your patent. Maybe you follow a patent. There are a lot of companies who follow an umbrella of patents. They keep on, by the time the patent life is going to be over, they do a small tweak modification and extend the life of the patent. Like that, they go on. You see to it that nobody comes closer to you. And also you have to uh, watch whether somebody is copying or not copying. There's a big system called infringement and you have to monitor infringement. Again, the period, your paper may get accepted in just two months to one year, whereas this takes three to four years. And that itself has got some problems. And the clarification sort comes after two years. The fellow examines after two years and he asks you some questions. You might have forgotten what you did. If you depended on your students to give you the result, then you might have forgotten most of them. So all these are extremely difficult in our setting for a patent. And then the validity of the period is also limited. If you have a patent, there are only 20 years limited. After that, it is everybody's property. Any can profit out of it. Then the type of work, only successful things which have a utility value are patentable. Anything that fails will not work. It is not patentable. Only if something works, if it's got a utility value, it can be patented. Therefore, if you look at it, the first slide was very easy, which all of us are doing. The second part is very difficult and none of us are really looking into it. But how to do that? We'll look at it. So uh, we have to understand why a patent, why not something else. Therefore, let's look at a brief of intellectual property rights. Even though many of you would have known it, let me once again put it in my understanding. What's a patent and what are the other different types of, we call it as IPR, intellectual property rights, because it's like a property, but it is there in your mind. Therefore, it's called as an intellectual property. There are different kinds of methods. Uh, we'll try to understand what's a patent, what are the different types of patent, what are the conditions for patentability of a work, then look at searches, application, et cetera, et cetera. What is the ownership? Who owns the patent? Uh, and then 
how industries and universities are handling patents, etc. This is a slight scope for us to understand before we discuss further. So this you might have seen in earlier presentations also. I, I used to uh, use the same thing. Just go through this. All of us know this. If you have an ordinary physical property, you have to register with the higher authority. That person gives you exclusive right to use it, use the place. He also prevents you from uh, allowing others for unlawful occupation. But in order to get that right, you have to define the boundaries of the property. Left bound by this place, east bound by this road, etc. Et you have to define the physical limit. In Tamil, we call it as Chakubandi. So you have to give the limit of all the four directions, limited by which property on all the four sides. Then, as long as we use, we have to keep a watch on it. We don't allow others to misuse. If somebody misuses or comes into our property, we can go to court. All these are understood by us for a physical property. Now, the same thing you have for intellectual property. Here also, you have to register with an authority, not the property registration, but with a patent office. The patent office gives you the right to use your idea to make product. It prevents others from unlawful copying. Again, in order to get that right, just like defining my boundary of the property, I have to define the boundary of my intellectual property. That is where we call it as a claim. It's called as a claim. What do you claim by this invention? I claim such and such thing. So that claim is the property you are claiming in your intellect mind. So that's the property they are going to offer you rights to use. Then you have to ensure nobody uh, steals your idea. Or that is called as a infringement. There are several methods. If there's an infringement, you have to go to a court. There are exclusively appellate courts for patent, but recently that appellate courts have been abolished. You have to go straight only to the, uh, as like any other judicial court. But having got a patent, like if you got a house, you will either use it or rent it or lease it. There is no point keeping a house locked. Same way, if you got a patent that also costs money, you must either use it to make a product or to sell it to somebody or license it to somebody to use it. Otherwise, the patent is useless. Therefore, please have these things in mind. What are the different kinds of IPR? Uh, and why should we patent? This also comes to your mind always. Supposing there is a method to cure cancer, you hold it to yourself and make money for yourself, but it will not reach the major public. Therefore, in order to make it to reach the entire public, the government is offering this method. You disclose the method, let everybody know that this is available, but money making is only for you. You hold it for a minimum period of time. After 20 years, let everybody use that method. That's the idea of patenting. So there are two conflicting requirements. One is benefit to society versus benefit to the individual. That is why there is a protection period of 20 years. 20 years is exclusively for you. You can get the rights by selling that idea. Then uh, in the protection system also, you are given the right to make profit by using this invention. And therefore you have to describe what you have invented. It becomes public property after the granted period. That's a risk, please understand this. If I'm disclosing a method, it's exclusively for me only for 20 years. After that, it's everybody's property, okay? But sometimes there are people who um, uh, don't share anything, they keep it to themselves, and then it doesn't uh, grow at all. Uh, for example, Coca-Cola is something, they hold it as a trade secret, they don't share at all. Now, these are some different kinds of uh, IPs in uh, use. You may know it. Trademark is something there, copyright is there, patent is there. Just quickly run through it. Trademark is any symbol or letter or name or sound which is used to promote